Beware of the tick. Ticks are typically out from spring through summer and early fall, but 2017 is particularly bad, and here's why. The northeastern U.S. had a warmer winter, which means more ticks survived and made a whole bunch of baby bloodsuckers. There's also been an increase in the number of deer and other woodland creatures, which ticks typically rely on as food sources. Oh, and don't forget the exploding mice population across the northeastern United States. More rodents to act as hosts. Fun! So here are the problems you might encounter and some ways to combat them. People living in areas affected by Lyme disease should check their bodies daily for ticks. And if you do find one, don't panic. Using tweezers, carefully remove the tick by pulling its mouth out of the skin. Do not squeeze the tick's body, as this can cause the contents of its stomach to burst onto the skin. Also, don't use petroleum jelly or smoke to remove it. Check with the Centers for Disease Control if Lyme disease is a problem in your area. Save the tick for lab testing, monitor your health, and if you develop symptoms of Lyme disease, consult a doctor. The Powassan virus is a potentially life-threatening virus transmitted by ticks, including the deer tick. The virus can infect everyone, including children, teenagers, middle-aged people, and the elderly. Although most people will not develop symptoms, the virus kills about 15% of those who do. Meanwhile, some 50% of survivors will suffer long-term neurological damage. Others will experience symptoms similar to those of the flu, including fevers and headaches. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is a tick-borne illness caused by a bacterium known as Rickettsia rickettsii. Doctors think that Oklahoma woman Jo Rogers may have been bitten by a carrier tick as she visited Grand Lake in the northeast of the state during a vacation in July. Four days later, Rogers thought she had caught a severe flu and was taken to hospital where she was tested for life-threatening diseases such as West Nile virus and meningitis. When all the tests came back negative, Rogers' doctors decided to amputate all four of her limbs to stop the infection from spreading to her vital organs. The symptoms of Rocky Mountain spotted fever include a fever, rash, nausea and muscle pain. It can be treated with antibiotics within five days of an infection. If you notice someone in your family or yourself displaying flu-like symptoms, do remember that it isn't flu season. It's probably a tick. So, um, go see a doctor. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Get that thing off my face! Parents mistake tick infection for a mole. In Hunan, central China, parents of a two-year-old girl were horrified to watch doctors pull a large tick out from under their child's scalp. The mother of the little girl noticed the dark spot and assumed it was a mole, but then the skin around the edges of the mole started to get red and irritated. When doctors saw the red irritable bump, they realized it was a tick, so with a pair of tweezers they removed a large, well-fed tick from the little girl's head. The parents were shocked and confused as to where their toddler could have picked up the miniature blood-sucking monster. Ticks are small arachnoids who are ectoparasites, meaning they must feed on blood in order to survive. The best way to remove an adult tick is mechanically, to avoid leaving behind mouth parts or to avoid causing regurgitation of infective fluids into the wound. The bite should be thoroughly cleaned after each removal. A virus spread by ticks has reportedly left dozens of people dead in western Japan. Japan's Infectious Disease Surveillance Center has warned that the killer tick that carries the virus, which causes severe fever and thrombocytopenia syndrome, or SFTS, can be found in 30 of the country's prefectures ranging from Hokkaido in the north to the southern island of Kyushu. The SFTS virus is transferred through the bite of ticks, which are known to inhabit areas with a lot of vegetation and shrubbery. In addition to causing fevers, the symptoms of the virus include diarrhea, and in some cases, a lower white blood cell and platelet count, as well as organ failure and even death. The most recent outbreak of the virus has infected 53 people, leaving as many as 21 people dead. No effective vaccine for the virus currently exists. Japan's Ministry of Health has warned citizens to be careful and avoid leaving their skin exposed in areas where the tick may lurk. Those of a nervous disposition, look away now. 
A British holiday maker is recovering from surgery after she came home from vacation with some unwanted souvenirs. The unnamed 46-year-old woman apparently picked up some nasty insect bites during a visit to the Ivory Coast. After 10 days in pain, she went to the hospital to get the source checked out. And that's when doctors realized she'd been infested with larvae from the parasitic tumbu fly. The female tumbu fly lays its eggs in soil or on damp clothes. Within about two days, the larvae hatch and wait for a chance to penetrate human skin. The larvae burrow into the subcutaneous tissue, usually on the back buttocks or backs of the limbs. Once inside, the parasites spend eight to 10 days feeding on the host. It's around about this point that most people notice something is up and seek medical attention. But not everyone. If left untreated, the fully developed larvae will eventually force its way out of the skin and fall to the ground. The larvae will then pupate to become a fly, ready to continue the life cycle of the species. Of course, most people can't stand the pain and will ask for help long before the maggots push out of their skin. <laughs> maggots. <laughs> The best way to avoid a tumbu fly infestation is by ironing clothes, because heat kills the larvae. Smearing oil or Vaseline over the sore starves the maggots of air and usually forces them to the surface. But in the British woman's case, the larvae refused to budge when doctors tried to squeeze them out. So they put her under local anesthetic and took the critters out surgically. The woman was treated with antibiotics and is now fully recovered from her ordeal. No word on where she'll be taking her next vacation, though. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. A South Florida woman inadvertently set her dog on fire after she tried to burn a tick using a lighter. Telma Botcherby was cleaning her pet terrier, Ruby, at her Parkland, Florida home when she noticed the live tick on the floor. The 50-year-old brought out a barbecue lighter and tried to burn the tiny bug. But Ruby became startled and ran past the lighter. The poor pup, having just been doused in highly flammable tick spray, instantly burst into flames. Botcherby's quick-thinking husband scooped up Ruby in his arms and made a beeline for the swimming pool, ultimately saving her life.